Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for making it this early on a Sunday morning. My name is Shalini Saraswati. Um, I am a quadruple amputee. And um, thank you so much for everybody being here today. Um, I'm going to start um, with a little bit of what I do very often. Um, I'll tell you a bit about my story. Um, and uh, I, I just after I got back uh, from the hospital, I remember um, a day where I was sitting upstairs um, uh, in, my, in my room. Uh, my parents had put out to watch uh, television, and everybody else was downstairs uh, having lunch. And uh, while I was watching television, uh, it opens out to a little balcony. And uh, I had this little beetle that came into the room. Um, now, the beetle, like, realistically, is small. It's, 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 it's tinier than my little hand is. Um, but while I lied in bed and I looked at that beetle, uh, the beetle looked menacing. Um, and uh, I felt it was life-threatening. It was my moment in Anaconda, if you've watched the movie, where you're lined up and you have the snake face right in front of you. Huge. That was my moment for me. And I remember screaming, and I remember screaming so much um, to have everybody in my family come upstairs. And, uh, and we then figured out it was only a beetle, and it wasn't really life-threatening. Um, but me screaming that day was um, totally uh, not just out of fear, but it was because of the helpness, helplessness of the situation that I was in. Um, I couldn't protect myself, and neither could I protect anybody else around me. Uh, and that was a fear more than anything else that I faced that day. From that journey um, to when I went to get my legs amputated, um, I went uh, the, the day just before I could get my legs amputated, um, there was this call that went out to all my friends to say uh, I need a bright purple nail polish. Um, and uh, I wanted it uh, for two reasons. One, being dark-skinned. Um, you never ever wore anything that was bright. It was never something that was ever allowed. Um, and uh, I wanted my legs to know what it felt like to have bright nail polish. And secondly, I decided if my legs were going to go out, they were going to go out in style and nothing less. Um, so from that point to where I decided that I was going to get my legs amputated was a journey in itself. It was a journey of acceptance. It was a journey um, uh, that I finally made peace with letting go of life as I knew it and uh, accepting the new life that came along. Um, and during this entire journey, what made it easy for me was having my family um, and my friends around who stood like the rock of Gibraltar, if I can say that, uh, because they stood by um, with, with so much of strength, with so much of love, uh, and that's what got me through it. Um, and uh, today, when I stand in front of you, I stand as a very, very confident person um, because uh, the, the amount of love that I got uh, gave me the wings. Uh, it, gave me, um, it, it gave me the energy to do whatever I want to do. It gave me so much of strength to do whatever I want to do. Uh, it made the possibility of wings possible for me. Uh, and today, when I wear blades and uh, get out, out there to run, um, I don't think about it as being ashamed. I don't think about it as something that I need to be apologetic about. Um, I almost feel very badass in it. It's the moment where I feel Wonder Woman meets Superman meets uh, Batman. That's my moment in Blades. Um, and what, what it has done for me is given me so much of confidence. Uh, and I feel that this entire journey uh, makes you realize that what matters the most in this world, it's not the gold, it's not the diamonds, it's not the wealth, it's just love. Uh, it's absolute love that you can get from people around you. Uh, and all this love, what it also does is give you a confidence sometimes to look up at the sky and point my non-existent finger and say that you chose to mess with the wrong woman. You just chose to mess with the wrong person. Um, um, what adversity also teaches you is um, that um, you know you focus on the things that you can do against the things that you cannot do. And during the two and a half years that I was in bed, I focused on things that I could do. Um, I read like my life depended on it. Uh, I learned to sing. I listened to every kind of music I could. I spent as much time as I could with my friends and family. Um, and I discovered writing. 
Now, uh, I was somebody who, uh, the only exposure that I had to writing uh, was writing greeting cards, yes, for the younger generation today. There was a time when we actually wrote greeting cards for people on their birthday. And uh, that was the only time that I ever wrote anything for anybody. Um, but what disability and this adversity has done for me is the ability to write. Uh, during my darkest, darkest times, I have written this really awful, dark poetry uh, that helped me make peace with where I had been. Um, it helped me heal. It was almost therapeutic. Uh, the first time I ever wrote my blog, I write a blog called Soul Survived Intact. Um, I remember crying. I, I cried through the entire, writing the entire blog. And then when I went back to check the grammar and punctuations, I cried all over again. Um, and then every time somebody would write a comment on the blog, I cried again. But what it did for me um, was it gave me peace. And being able to write, um, it's one thing to, to feel vulnerable and to know you're weak. Uh, but it's another to put it out in the world for it to see. And uh, what writing did for me was that it made me understand how beautiful my scars were. Uh, these scars are, uh, are exterior right now, but I know that all of us in this world, and I think every single person today have scars, whether they're physical or metaphorical or mental, uh, and all of us deal with it in the ways that we do. And every time I've written, what it's done is that it's given somebody else in the world to turn back and tell me that, hey, I have scars too, and uh, this has helped me make peace. So uh, writing has done that to me. Um, the last thing that I will talk about, and it's my favorite, favorite uh, thing to talk about in the world, is, um, and Preeti yesterday spoke about it in the forum as well, about the impermanence of life. Um, all of us, I think, a lot of us in this room more, know that more than anybody else, uh, that how in a click of a button something really changes in your life. Um, and uh, for me, I feel that we spend way too much of time on um, doing very well with our work and uh, acquiring things, and sometimes life is about the little moments. Um, it is about being able to watch every sunset and sunrise because they are the most beautiful things in the world. Uh, being able to walk on grass, trust me, you, won't, uh, you would want to remember that when you don't have your legs. Um, it's about being able to um, walk on the beach. It's about holding hands. It's about calling that person and telling them that you love them. And uh, sometimes, you know, as friends, we always make these plans, Macha, where are you? We have to catch up. Uh, I would tell all of you out here to go out, make friends, go out, call that friend that you've been wanting to forever, uh, make that trip, girl's trip, boy's trip that you've been planning forever. More than anything else, make just beautiful memories for yourself uh, because that is the only thing that you can hold on to in your life. Nothing else really is going to be ever, um, you can ever hold in your life but just beautiful memories. So I'm going to leave you with a little poetry um, that I really, really enjoy. Um, if you could, sorry, this is the part where I don't know my poetry by heart. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, someone once told me always live for the little things in life. Uh, live for 5 a.m. sunrises and 5 p.m. sunsets, where you see colors in the sky that don't usually belong. Live for road trips and bike rides with music in your ears and the wind in your hair. Live for days when you're surrounded by your favorite people um, who make you realize that the world is not a cold, harsh place. Live for the little things because they will make you realize that that is what life is about. That is what it means to be alive. So stay alive, people. Thank you. Thank you.